All right. You know, this is like the third time I've had to try to make this. I think I finally figured it out. So, um, I'll just give you a basic run through of how, uh, how I, how I color and stuff. Just to give you a better, uh, idea. And it's sort of like a more in-depth tutorial. Uh, sorry if, uh, I think I got your email where you said, uh, you didn't realize the layers were locked. I do that by force of habit. Sorry about that. If that took you, like, a long time to figure that out. But, uh. Yeah, I got this scene right here. It's not a Beans and Frank scene. Um, I'll just play it real quick. That's right, Reggie. No meaningless battles. Number one rule of being a ninja. Besides, do you think she could even stand a chance? Right. That's right. So, um, you know, like with the file I send you, sent you, I got uh, everything separated into uh, different layers. Uh, you know, I'll try to be good about that and label all my layers and um, organize everything. Normally, I just have everything all over the place. Uh, but yeah, so oh, you know what? I just realized I don't have a color palette for this. Hold on one second. Um, bear with me. Hang on. This one. Disregard uh, how I name my files. <laughs> there we go. Um, you always want to get in the good habit of naming your uh, naming your um, layers while you're working on them. So, oh, excuse me. Uh, you know, I gave you uh, a pre-made color palette, but I'm just going to eye drop from this thing. Uh, so normally, what I'll do is um, I'll just you know I'll do the flats first, and um, you know I got. Everything's separated. Even the mouth and the body are two separate layers. So, um, I think actually what I want to do, I want to do the mouth first. Just because there's so many keys for that. So many frames. So, uh, actually don't have a color palette for the mouth. Uh, pink. But, you know, it's just pink and white. Oh, uh, one thing you can do, um, I just thought about this. For the whites, you know, you got to color a lot of white things. And uh, sometimes when I'm animating, I'll... I'll have something filled white and you know you can't see it against this white background so if you go up here to modify document and then right here which is background color you can change this to a dark color uh, so you can see your uh, whites so I, I usually I use like a gray or something or whatever so that way if you got anything that's already white you can you can see it like uh like her teeth right there but yeah so um, like I said, I use a lot of keyboard shortcuts, so I'm using, uh, paint bucket is K, um, I'm also going to be using the line tool, line tool is N, uh, arrow key, this one right here is V, and then I'm also scrubbing through the timeline using, um, uh, what are these keys called, the, uh, the period key and the comma key, you know, they're like two arrows, so you can go in the direction that the arrow is pointing. And spacebar, you know, you hold down the spacebar, you can move this. Uh, you're using Mac, so to zoom in, it's Apple plus and Apple minus, I think. Right? So, yeah. So, what I do is I just go through and uh, I try to do flats as fast as I can. Um, okay, so you see what just happened? Um, one thing I don't think I covered is uh, with the paint bucket, um, the paint bucket has these options with it where um, if you got a line that's not closed, like normally if you have a line that's not closed, it won't fill. It has to be closed, but uh, the paint bucket has these options where you can make it automatically close the line for you. And um, normally for this type of thing, I either try this one, 
like I, I'll stick with these first two. Don't close small gaps, or if that doesn't work, I try. I use this one, the second one. So I'm gonna Control Z, and that works. Um, the reason I stick with this one, only time I use this one is if the previous one doesn't work. So if this doesn't work, I'll go to this one. If that doesn't work, I'll go to this one. And then you know, if I have a problem, I'll do my zoom trick where um, if you zoom out, uh, because of the way Flash scales, it's not like Photoshop where if you make a line, it stays the same width no matter what um, level you're zoomed into. Um, with Flash, when you zoom in and out, it changes your line quality. So, like if I'm using um, a 0.3 line and I zoom in, it's going to make that line thinner. And if I zoom out, it's going to make that line thicker. Even though technically it's the same line, depending on where you're zoomed. So, um, the same thing goes for like pre made lines. So, if I have a gap and I zoom out, if I zoom out really far, it's shrinking the lines. So, it's presumably closing the lines, if that makes sense. I don't know if I'm making sense, whatever. But yeah, let's go uh, color this guy real quick. And I try to do this as fast as possible because you don't want to spend too much time. Whoops. You don't want to spend too much time doing flats. This is my least favorite part of the animation process. Okay, um, sometimes you run into a problem where you see how I just tried to fill that. Um, that's because, um, because of the way I animated this, it, like, this is where I was, but then you can see I switched to a different layer. So, just drop down to this layer, and it should work. I, like, one thing I do, I keep my layers locked. Like, any layer I'm not using, I keep it locked, because you don't want to, you don't want to accidentally, um, uh, like what'll happen is sometimes if you have all these unlocked, um, what'll happen sometimes is you'll think you're working on one layer and then you'll start filling on another layer. Um, it's kind of hard to, to it's kind of hard unless you see it happen. So if it comes up, I'll show you. But yeah, usually I keep these locked and then unlock the one I'm working on. Oh, I'm still in the wrong layer, huh? I'll try to do a better job labeling. Ooh, that's a bad drawing. That's a bad looking drawing. I'll try to do a, be a better job of labeling these. And uh, I copy and pasted this from that other file, so it's missing her mouth frames right here, but that's fine. Oh, see? That's what I was talking about. See, it switches back to this mouth layer. So, just got to be aware of that. Try not to mess you up too much by doing that. And then next, do the whites. Uh, yeah, but like I said, this is like the third time I've had to do this tutorial video because um, I was having audio problems. So hopefully, hopefully you can understand what I'm saying this time. And the thing I learned about coloring is it always seems like more work than it actually is. At least for me, this isn't like my least favorite part, having to go through and do this. And usually I'll do it 
in like two. I won't. I I can very. It's very rare I can do it all in uh, one sitting. Usually I gotta. I, I like do the flats and then come back later and do the shadows or something. Okay, so now I'm gonna do the skin, and you might have noticed I switched layers. Whoops. Yeah, it's pretty straightforward. Oh, okay, different layer. I'm just going to leave both of those unlocked. Ugh, these are some bad looking in betweens. I hope nobody watches this frame by frame. Because, uh, you know, one thing I'm using uh, on this uh, particular uh, animation that I'm showing you, I used a lower frame rate. Beans and Frank is actually 24 frames per second. Um, this thing is on 12 frames per second. So using a lower frame rate sort of lets you get away with doing terrible looking in-betweens. But I, I used uh, 24 on Beans and Frank, but just because it... uh. It gives you some more options and stuff as far as like doing like um, animation smears and stuff like that but whatever you know normally uh, when I'm coloring because this is so tedious I have usually have some kind of music blasting Okay, one thing uh, you'll notice, I was about to do the shirt. I just thought about this. Um, like, this line is open right here, so what I'll do, I just switch to the line tool, and I'll just make a line. Uh, normally, I don't like using black lines. I like using, uh, like, some kind of bright, colorful line, just so I can see it and I know which line to delete. I'll take that, copy it, because that stays stationary this whole time and then I'll just paste it in place and go through whoops I pasted it on the wrong layer that's one thing uh, you gotta be aware of um, when you're pasting these lines you gotta be aware of what layer you're doing it on which is why I like to switch back and forth between locking these layers because what will happen is um, like on this frame where it switches to this bottom layer I would have had the line on this top layer and then I would have tried to fill it, and I wouldn't know why it's not filling. And it's because the line would have been on a different layer, and this would have actually been open still. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, just keep pasting in place, frame by frame. And like in the shot, she's you might have saw, she's sitting at a table. So this part where it's cut off, you know, don't worry about that too much. And um, uh, you can see I have a gap right here. Uh, don't worry too much about this overlap because we can delete that. Uh, but since it's selected, you can use the arrow keys to slide it over. So that's what I'm doing. And actually, I can copy and paste this one. Paste in place will save you so much time. Just in general. So we did that. Switch back to the paint bucket. Uh, like I was saying though, usually I got some music blasting. Uh, some kind of soundtrack or something. To sort of keep me awake while I'm doing colors. Because it can be so tedious sometimes. Sometimes, like, I'm so glad I, I have you to do this for me. <laughs> it's kind of hard to sit here and do this in silence. Um, so this, whoops, this part of our hat I'm going to leave open because that has a shadow on it. I'm just gonna leave that. Uh, if you want to get like some of these, I can see where it's like cutting off, right here. 
Let me just zoom in and get that. Uh, you always want to be aware of that too. Like, if you ever try to fill and it doesn't do it, normally it's because you're on the wrong layer. So you just switch to another layer. And um, you, you notice how I'm getting these gaps right here on every frame. You can eliminate that by zooming in a little bit. Because, you know, uh, that zooming in thing works both ways. So since I'm zoomed out, um, you know, it's making more gaps or something. I don't know. Flash is weird. Flash is finicky sometimes. Uh, this version of Flash, actually. Flash CS5, I don't like it that much. I've been having problems with it. One thing, the, the best advice I can give you is to make sure you save often. Save like every 10 minutes.